What's going on everybody? I'm Craig. This is Chewbacca. Uh, a week ago I went to Galaxy's Edge in Walt Disney World Hollywood Studios in Florida and I just want to share my experience, uh, tell you what I thought about it, and give you all my overall impression. Uh, first of all, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, it's something they created within the Star Wars universe. It's on the planet of Batuu. Uh, they're the city of Black Spire Outpost. A fun easter egg that I found was that L3 says to Lando in Solo, a Star Wars story, uh, she says to him, uh, you can't even get to Black Spire without me and now you want to make the Kessel Run? I thought that was pretty cool. So the fact that they integrated it into the Star Wars universe is just awesome. Uh, I want to go over some positives, some negatives, and then my overall uh, feel about it. And then I'm going to go over some questions. Uh, that you might have if you were going to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Questions that I had, that I had to look up, and thankfully I did because a lot of them, uh, I wouldn't have been able to experience the experience I did if I didn't know a lot of these things. So I want to help you uh, experience what I had. First of all, the positives, when you're walking into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, it feels like Star Wars. It feels like you're walking on another planet. I mean, everything has changed from the garbage cans to uh, the Coke bottles and the Sprite bottles. It, it just feels awesome in Star Wars. Droids everywhere. Um, the, the cast members are in character all the time. When you're buying something, they'll say that's 6.50 credits uh, instead of $6.50. There's so much you can do there. Uh, other than just ride the rides, which I'm going to get to in a little bit, but there's so much to do. You can uh, build a droid, you can build a lightsaber, uh, you can eat so much. You could go to the Black Spire Market, and on top of that you got the two rides there. And that brings me to another positive, one of the rides is Smuggler's Run. And Smuggler's Run, without giving away too much, I don't want to spoil anything, but you can ride it multiple times and get a little bit different experience. Uh, so I'm not going to say much about that, but you can, which, which makes it that much better. You can go back, and it's just as awesome every time you go. One thing that I really loved about uh, Galaxy's Edge is when you're walking around, they also have Stormtroopers. And, and Kylo Ren I've seen, Rey I've seen, Chewie I've seen walking around the park. And obviously they're staying in character the whole time and the stormtroopers will go randomly up to people when they're on the phone. Like, what are you doing with that data pad? Um, they'll grab little kids' hands and take them in for questioning and the kids will just hold their hands and go with them, which is <laughs> kind of scary to think about it. They'll just go off with a stranger. But... Uh, it's, it's really cute and it's funny uh, to watch it happen, when, especially when it's a little Jedi holding a lightsaber. They're taking them in for questioning. But it's awesome. They, they have uh, Stormtrooper voices. They all sound the same, so there's some, sort of, there's some sort of way they're doing the talking. If anybody knows how that happens, because I think it's hand gestures. You can see them doing a lot of this and this. But uh, there's a way that they're, 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 they're communicating through their headset. And it's just awesome, the phrases that they say. It's hilarious. Another positive, one big positive to me, is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Now, there's a lot of negatives that go into this ride that I'll come up to in a little bit, but the ride itself is spectacular. I was lucky enough to do it two times in the four days that I went to Disney World. Oh my god, it was amazing. So now let's talk about some negatives. Uh, to me, the biggest negative, which, because when I was walking into Black Spire Outpost and I saw the Millennium Falcon, I was like, oh man, I really hope I can go on the Millennium Falcon. But you can't. They don't allow anybody in there. I mean, I kind of get it. They don't want people ruining it. But that would just be amazing. They have the, uh, the walkway down uh, showing, you know, that you could walk up into the Millennium Falcon, but it's all blocked off. Uh, Chewie walks around sometimes and is looking at it and trying to repair it. But the fact that you can't go on it, uh, man, that, that, that really kind of bummed me out because I was looking forward to that. 
a lot. Uh, on the topic of that, you really can't sit in any of the displays. They've got an X-Wing there, they've got Land Speeders, A-Wing. They just got them on display, which is awesome. They, they look phenomenal. But aside from taking a picture of them, um, and, and the cast members doing some things around them, you can't sit in them. One of the negatives uh, goes back to the Rise of the Resistance ride. Now, getting into Rise of the Resistance is a feat in itself. It's a little complicated. You need to get a boarding pass to get in. To get a boarding pass, you need to have the app, uh, the Disney My Experience app, and you need to be there right when the park opens. Uh, so, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later uh, with my questions uh, section. So now my overall impression of the park. Overall impression, those negatives, they don't stop me from going back. I am going to go back. It was amazing. The experience felt like something out of this world. It felt different. It just was... It was Star Wars from the minute I got there to the minute I left. I spent way too much money there. As you can see, I got the Jarex and lightsabers, a droid, a couple other random knickknacks, sweater. Uh, I spent way too much money. I mean, I'm, I don't regret it because I don't know when I'm going back, but it was very expensive. <laughs> Plan to spend a lot of money if you're a Star Wars fan. You go into Doc Ondar's uh, shop of antiquities, that'll get you. So now coming up to the questions part of the video, one of the major questions you might be asking is, how can I get on the rides? For one, Rise of the Resistance. Smugglers run, you get on just like any other ride in Disney World. You wait in line. Uh, typically it's an hour to an hour and a half wait average, I saw. Rise of the Resistance, on the other hand, you need to get a boarding pass. Those sell out within a minute of the park being open. Not sell out, but are released uh, within a minute of the park being open. You need to get there pretty early just to make sure you're in the park right as the uh, park opens and when it does you're on the app you're refreshing and when you refresh you click join boarding group you add whoever's in your party and then you continue and then it says your boarding group number blah 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 throughout the day they get up to in Disney World they get up to average I'd say about a hundred 120 boarding groups we were group 48 one day we were group 27 another day so when it's your time to board, they'll send you a notification saying, hey, you have two hours to get to Rise of the Resistance. So you can actually go to another park. You can go wherever, back to your hotel, take a nap, wake up, and if you got that two hours, you can get right back into uh, Hollywood Studios, go to Rise of the Resistance, get right on the ride. You might be asking, how much time do I need to see everything? Realistically, you can see the park in just one day. Uh, if you're taking your time, if you want to just, you know, see everything and take it all in as it is, one day is sufficient. If you're lucky enough to get in there early to get a Rise of the Resistance boarding pass, you are golden. I also would highly recommend getting a reservation for Ogus Cantina and Savi's Workshop to build a lightsaber. I made reservations three weeks in advance, and they were just about sold out. I found like the last slot uh, for the week that I'm going. Uh, but I'm telling you now, you have six months in advance you can make a reservation. So if you know you're going to Disney World, I highly recommend making a reservation to Ogus Cantina and uh, Savi's Workshop. So there's a lot to do that you can do in one day. Now, another question on top of that is, can, if you're limited on time, how much can you see? If you're limited on time, you can still see it all in one day. The longest part would be to get onto Smuggler's Run waiting. One question you might have is, what are the main attractions to see if you're limited on time? Personally, try to get into the Rise of the Resistance. That is unbelievable. Uh, it's an experience like no other, and it's a Star Wars experience that you don't want to miss. And also, if you're limited on time, the Black Spire Outpost shops and Doc Ondar's uh, Den of Antiquities 
or two you could just walk through if you don't want to buy anything. Just seeing everything is phenomenal. But if you do want to buy some, some souvenirs as you're there, the perfect places to do that. Check out the food, uh, the blue milk. Uh, of course, Luke Skywalker drinks blue milk in A New Hope and uh, Last Jedi. So that's it. Uh, that is my thoughts and review about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I had a blast reliving it with you. If you have any comments, any other questions, let me know. Um, until next time, as they say on Batu, to the spire.